Hey, Turbo. Hey, Tobes. We got some more snow. Oh, you coming in? Coming inside, huh? Uh, drastic change in the weather. It's supposed to get down to like nine degrees tonight, so I gotta. It, this, I have to get this in here. And it's gotta come in here because the gates are frozen shut. I can't get the gates open and pour boiling water on them. Nothing. They're just, yeah. So this is, this will be interesting. It'll fit, right? Might drip some water on the floor. That's okay. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing here. Being my helper, Toby. You're both being so helpful, standing in the way, right where I need to be. You can come in, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Good boy. Baby should go pot first. Because the thing is, the palm tree's frozen. You really shouldn't be messing with the frozen plants all that much because you can break them. So I don't want to re-bend the branches to get it in the house. They may never go back to how they need to be. <laughs> he really likes the snow. Could lay it down this way. And then carry the pot. I have to figure this out then. It's 11 degrees. I'm kind of cold. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Yeah, if you're here, everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Got the dogs here in the kitchen. It's a beautiful day, or it was a beautiful day. The day's almost over. With that nice weather, I'm thinking that this would be a good time to get outside and put down some more wilt stop and anti-desiccant, anti-transpirant. I should do that before it gets dark outside. Brought the palm tree inside. That was at the end of last week's vlog. Y'all, maybe, I don't, I don't know if you watched to the very end of the videos, but that, that was a bit of a task. It was a chore. Managed to get it in. This windmill palm, Started to go on the decline. It has a spear in here that's all dried up. I did a treatment of fungicide in there. It has a secondary spear that's just not looking good. I've done some twisting, some pulling. Nothing's coming out, so that's a good sign. I'm just gonna keep on treating it, take good care of it, and hopefully it'll be fine. I really find this ironic that the palm tree that I have been babying and bringing inside, if it drops below 10 degrees, that's the one that's having a decline on the spear. At the ones that I've left outdoors, you can't really see from here, but I left one outside and I left two on the front porch. They're fine, totally fine. Nothing wrong with them. So it can be risky moving the plants around when they're frozen. But I don't necessarily know if that's what's going on there. And my guess would be it's probably more from being really cold and then warm when it's been moved into the grow space or back into the house. Just It's been moved around a lot. And this one was in this corner over here behind the cat tree, but outside. And that spot's pretty exposed to wind. It's also fairly sheltered though. Sheltered as in the cold air doesn't collect there during the winter time, tends to move around, tends to drift away more this direction. So in a warmer spot, but with a good amount of wind. Gotta keep it happy and stay on top of that fungicide stuff. Should also really shut up right now because there's only maybe an hour and a half of daylight left and I need to get that anti-transpirant down on the plants. Could be the last opportunity to get that done before it gets cold outside again. Didn't really need a dramatic transition there. All I'm doing is filling up a jug with water. You guys remember this thing? Anybody? Picked that up at Lowe's a few weeks ago. Need to get it put together, add some welt stop, and be good to go. This right here, the reason I don't do a ton of winter planters. See how low the water pressure is? I have to water the plants that are outside. So everything that's outside in a container, I have to fill up a watering can inside and take it outside. It takes like an hour and a half just with what I have out here. So every fall when I'm thinking, oh, I should do more containers so the yard looks really pretty during the winter time, then I remember how long it takes to fill up the watering cans and go, you know what, never mind. I think the backyard's good. It'll be fine. I can look naked out there for a few months. I really don't care. At about halfway, a little over halfway, perfect. Go ahead and add in the anti-transpirant. Very precise measurements here. Slide that over there and fill it up the rest of the way. And get that stuff off my thumb, it stinks. Get that in there. Probably should have done the assembly part before I started to fill it up, but that's okay, this works. And then let's hope that I didn't, I did, overfilled it. At least it's in the sink. Give it a little tip, let some of that excess out. Not a big deal, but it is a sticky substance. It's totally, the stuff I'm using, totally environmentally safe, but really have to make sure to rinse the sink out. He's behind it techy residue that's probably not great for the sink. I wouldn't say, I probably wouldn't hurt it actually, but why risk it, right? Get this thing on the end of there and get started. Tempting to film holding the camera while holding the jug so I can get the door shut behind me. Of course, it is extremely windy outside. Okay, uh-huh, yeah, this is very full. Give this a few pumps and it should be good. Oh yeah, that's, that's got a lot of pressure in it already, which is not surprising because I overfilled it. it. Took me a minute to figure out how to get that to clamp down and close up. All right. Ooh, that's a good spray. Good amount of pressure coming out of that. The, the palm trees that are out here, I already did a fungicide treatment down into the crowns. This stuff, it prevents water loss. It's like a waxy coating that you want to get on the tops 
And the bottoms of the leaves helps keep things from drying out during the winter time, helps keep the plants overall just more hydrated during the winter time. But because of that, if you put it on before the fungicide, then the fungicide can end up just beating up and washing away. Don't want to forget the needle palms. I don't normally need very much of this stuff because they're already so cold hardy and they have a nice thick waxy leaf on them but since i'm already out here figure may as well it's not going to hurt especially being able to get it up onto the tips of the fronds that helps prevent some leaf burn i'm looking around trying to see see those brown tips there kind of i can't focus the camera because i only have one hand there those little brown tips getting some of this stuff on the plants can help prevent that and just keep the plants happier during the cold dry spells of the winter time you need to this is not for you i know it looks like a toy but it's not a toy i like this sprayer especially this wide fan bit that i put on there that's nice really nice when i try and spray it away from the windows trying to find an angle here where i can get this little sable palm drenched without all those little water droplets getting on the window i've worn the hard way that once that gets onto glass it's not very easy to get off. You see what I just, I, oops. Those were supposed to end up in the garden and I guess they just barely made outside the door. It's, here they are. It's fine, I can scoop them up, it's no big deal. Poor sable miners. It's such a rough go this winter. Spears are still nice and green, so that's good. Could be a lot worse, this needle palm over here. I've had this one forever. Done a lot of growing, it was a tiny little seedling when I planted it. Needle palms do not grow fast at all so i'm happy with how big it's gotten and it's really been pretty sturdy doesn't look super hot right now but it's gonna be okay these guys i don't know centers are still nice and green that's all i care about i'm going to get this magnolia sprayed down and then i'm going to do the skip oral hedge and those little recurvifolia yuccas over there and pick up and do something more exciting later it's getting awkward out here because the neighbors are outside and they're yelling at each other sounds kind of heated though and i don't i don't speak the language so if something offenses if hey look daffodils are coming up it's exciting it shouldn't be, but they are kind of early, like a month and a half early, but we'll take it. What you doing, Pumpkin? Pumpkin, what's going on down there? Yeah, I know. That carpet's disgusting. Hence why I'm going to be doing new carpeting upstairs. It's the day. Today, it's happening. Old trim coming out, putting in five inch baseboards crown molding going up tomorrow no and don't get it twisted i'm not then i'm not doing it going through some of the gaps in here cutting the caulking out so the baseboards can get ripped up but like the tools and everything i don't have them all just makes more sense for somebody else to do it and that's going to start here shortly check back end of the video and get to see what the room looks like when it's all finished well it won't be finished because i still have there are things to do but like all this there's a lot of chaos it'll be close still got a lot of work to do why is this thing still running? Turned it off like three minutes ago. It goes through a cool down phase. That's not supposed to let, <laughs> my voice just cracked. It's not supposed to last very long. It should be off by now. Whatever, have to move on because sometimes it decides it doesn't want to turn off. It, it turned off. Could have just waited 30 seconds to start. It doesn't matter. Rain finally moved. Well, it's dark, you can't tell. It's been a busy day. <laughs> Got those plants taken care of. Pretty sure that anti-transpirant, anti-desiccant had enough time to sit and settle onto the leaves before the rain moved in it started off as a very gentle mist and now we've moved into the next day and it's it's really coming down out there which is great because it's like i talked about at the beginning of the video i don't like hauling giant buckets outside to water the plants so i'm happy that there's some moisture moving in we haven't done anything out here in a couple of weeks because of you know the spider mite situation just been waiting for the predator mites to do their thing i can't really move the plants around i've talked about all this don't want to be a broken record and just go over the same thing every single week but i'm just trying to take it easy with the plants take care of them keep them watered give them any nutrients that they might need but as far as moving things around which is what i want to do i have a lot of plants that i would like to rearrange in here i'm just not gonna do that not right now anyways but there are a few things that i wanted to Make sure to point out, just because I don't want to miss it. Okay, well, it didn't happen yet. Not the oleander was in flower, but it's not. I could have sworn that there was a butt up here on one of these, but I'm not seeing anything. And then doing my spider mite check up top also, that's important because it's really hard to tell from down below what's going on on top of the foliage. And they seem okay. Everything seems good up here. Croton got a little bit fried, but that was my fault. That has nothing to do with the spider mites. That was just a, that was a miscalculation on watering. They'll be fine. It's been rehydrated. Might need a cut back, but it could really use it anyways. It's getting sort of leggy. I haven't seen 
any of the beneficial mealy bugs that I released in here. The mealy bug destroyer, I, no, not beneficial mealy bugs. That's not a thing. Uh, the mealy bug destroyers. I think I was trying to say beneficial ladybugs. That's a little bit redundant because they're all pretty darn good. I haven't seen them, but I'm pretty sure they're out here because there were spots where there were a lot of teeny tiny little lady, not tiny, what is wrong with my brain? There were spots where there were a lot of very small mealybugs showing up on some of the plants that I'm not seeing anymore. And it was only 500 that I really sent. Ladybugs normally come in giant bags. You can get them by the thousands, but the mealybug destroyers, not the same situation. This hibiscus over here though, I don't know. It's still got all kinds of critters on it. It's got ladybugs on it. I released a ton of the mealybug destroyer lady beetles on there and think that it might be best to just chuck it at this point because it's got like a whole bunch of different problems that I don't really feel like dealing with. And I have to get on a freaking ladder <laughs> to see the foliage because it's gotten so tall. Maybe I might, huh. The dilemma that you get into once you start using the beneficials is from that point on, you really can't spray. There are some things you can use beforehand and that may not be as bad for them. I talked about this in a different video. Nature's Good Guys website, they have a graph to show like what chemicals and things can be used with the beneficial predatory spider mites. Not spider, but guys, what's, what's, what's happened to my brain? They have a breakdown of things you can use with the predator mites that are you release to eat the spider mites. That's all good and well, but I have other things out here now too, like those uh, predator Lady, the mealybug destroyers. Wow, maybe I'm just not supposed to be filming right now. I'm gonna just go with it. Sometimes it's just life, it's a vlog, that's the way things go. But if a major issue is just down to one plant, then I could, if we have another warm day, just pull that outside and just go to town on it with some soaps and oils and clean it off. It's just, if it has a lot of the beneficials on there, then I'm gonna be killing those too, and I don't wanna do that. But I also don't want to let whatever the heck it is that's going on up there with the hibiscus just spread around in there. There's like a breakout of something. I can't really tell what it is because I can't get up there quite close enough. I think it's just a whole bunch of teeny tiny baby mealy bugs, but it could be something else. I'm thinking that the next warm day we have, I'm going to push that outside and uh, do whatever I can to at least knock the junk off of it. And just, I, I'm going to have to place another order for more of their predator mites, which I think, I don't know, we probably all saw that coming, right? Otherwise things are looking good. Seeing improvements on a lot of the plants, the uh, Alocasia longilotno cerion, Alocasia cerion right here. I had cut all of the foliage off of this. It had lots of webbing on it from the spider mites. And then when it opened up its new leaves, that was right around the same time, at least with these two leaves that a bunch of new predator mites came in the mail. I sprinkled those on there and I'm not seeing spider mites on there yet. These have been open for a couple weeks now, so that's a really good sign. They're not jumping onto new foliage right away. That's, I don't want to say promising, but it makes me hopeful. <laughs> the spider mites like a thin foliage. They like new, fresh, green growth, that more thin, tender growth on the plants. It's easier for them to chew through and like I just I don't I'm not seeing anything on there so that's good not seeing any other signs of the spider mites out here period actually lots of ladybugs they're all over the place I'm not seeing what they're eating I'm seeing stuff they're not eating that's not helpful they seem to be alive and well they're moving around doing their thing I don't think I need to do a replenishment on ladybugs anytime soon and then another encouraging thing with the spider mites is down did I just accidentally flick a ladybug up in the air the impatience that are back here, they're not showing anything. I'm not seeing any signs of spider mites on them so far, which is good because those tend to be spider mite magnets. So I don't know. I'm not saying that the problem has been fixed because it's something that takes a long time, have to keep on it. I'm going to keep releasing these. I'm gonna do another one next week so it will be three weeks apart from the last big release. And after that, maybe drop to once a month depending on what I'm seeing out here. I think that that will hopefully have it under control. I need to be careful with what I say. I really don't want to jinx it. In more exciting news, there's a leaf back there on the Warokianum that's facing away from the camera. I'm not gonna be able to see it, but it's getting ready to pop open a new leaf. And that the plant is finally doing some moving and some growing. Vichii over here did pop open a new leaf not too long ago. Again, very good. That makes me happy. I always see a Phalaenopsis still doing its thing, seemingly 
loving life over there it has two flowers on it and one, another one get ready to open up and again this one right here had lots of spider mites on it not seeing anything now this is a fresh leaf i had cut all the foliage off of this one not seeing anything coming up in there as far as things to do out here goes i don't i don't know so i have a gardenia that needs to be repotted that might be something to do also the pump in here just random there's what's going on here Nothing. Where's the water? Water's supposed to be circulating, moving through that filter pad. If it doesn't circulate, then it can get stagnant and nasty. So I like to make sure that it's moving, but there's nothing going on here. I wouldn't be shocked if this pump is broken. I'm really surprised this pump has even lasted this long, so it was really, really cheap. Sometimes if you just beat the crap out of them, they start to work again. Nope, nothing. I don't see anything inside the impeller. But I'm not doing anything else with this until I unplug it. I'm not sticking my finger down in there and have that get going and then you know, lose my tip. Not that unplugged. I don't want to put my finger down in here. Out of nowhere, they'll start to suddenly go. Probably be using a flathead for this, but I don't feel like trying to get around the filming lights to try and get to it. I'll just pry this up. That magnet out of there and everything's still moving. Little piece of, okay, that's not good. Yeah, that's probably part of the pump that just fell out of there. Part of the impeller that's in here, part of the ceramic ring that holds it together. It looks like it's broken. Sometimes they'll still work when those break, but uh, not reliably. It means it's probably time to go ahead and order a new pump. I might still be able to get it to turn on since I was able to clear the jam that was in there. Barely safe to say that it's probably just going to keep doing that. And I don't want to have to be taking this apart on a regular occasion to get it up and running. That was good. You see how it sprung back? Sprung back. Usually a good sign, but that down in there, plug it in and see what happens. Okay, nothing. Gonna have to order a new pump. Cheap thing lasted like four years. So I'll have to get online, order a new pump quickly because this is what I use to water the big plants out here. So that's something I really can't put off. What is this? This is the CTP 8000. That's, that's pretty much useless. I've used a lot of nicer pumps in the past. I used to have ponds a long, long time ago, and I just never found that the more expensive ones had more longevity. There are many pond enthusiasts who I'm sure are going to disagree with me on that, but the number of mag drives and Supremes and Danners and all those pumps that I've been through last like a year and then pff, nothing. They all break at some point, so I tend to go the cheaper route with good reviews. Like I said, four years, I think it was like 40 bucks. It's not bad at all. I have to make sure the pumps are safe to use with fish and all of those things of course, but that's not something I'm concerned about in here, but still something I think about because the water's going to the plants. I want it to be clean. Okay, let's uh, repot a gardenia. I should, I need to, that's still plugged in. I need to unplug that. The humidity's dropped in here. I had that garage door open for like a minute while I went outside to grab this pot. It's raining and that was still dried the air out. I don't feel like it's that dry outside, but I don't know. Apparently it is. Got the new pump ordered. That'll be here Friday before the video comes out. That'll have to wait until next week, so I like to be editing by Friday. Uh, the gardenia, that's that's what's happening now. You might remember this one. This is a steady as she goes gardenia from Proven Winners. I got this in a plant hall last spring, early summer, and it was just a little nub. There was barely anything inside this container and I decided to hold off on repotting it as much as I wanted to. I'm not a big fan of having the big white plastic containers around, at least not for a plant that I intend on having for more decorative purposes. If they're a tropical that maybe I sink into the ground or into a different container during the spring and summer, I don't really care that much. But with something like this, I don't know, it just really stands out. It was just so little. I didn't want to repot it. I figured I should just leave it alone, let it get some growth on it, which it has. It's probably doubled, maybe even tripled in size. I don't know. Hopefully I will have had that up on the screen. If not, then it's probably up there right now. Be able to see what it looked like when I first got the plant. This was a gardenia that I was really excited about getting. It's supposed to be very cold hardy, maybe into zone six. If you're trying to push things, I had mentioned when I got the plant that I was going to grow it out for a few years before I was even going to attempt to grow this in the ground. Will that fit in there like that? Nope, <laughs> that'd be nice. It was just too puny to even try during the winter time. And I'm really glad that I didn't put it in the ground because little did I know we were going to have record breaking temperatures in December. The garden, you've got you know, the garden looks bad. The most destruction I think I've ever seen on my plants. This spring is going to be very interesting as far as what needs to be replaced. I'm wondering if the mimosa 
may have died. It looks okay, but the damage on the Laurel Hedge, which is more hardy than the Mimosa and is right next to Mimosa, tells me that there might be some serious dieback on that tree. Just have to wait and see. You can't undo what's been done. Really wouldn't have been much I could do for a hedge anyways. I guess if I had a ton of landscaping fabric, then maybe I could have covered it up. Maybe, but I don't know. I need to be more specific about what's happening here with the gardenia. I'm starting to be concerned there might be people watching this video because they want to know about repotting a gardenia. Huh. <laughs> That's why you came here. I'm so sorry. Hi. I will cut up what I'm doing here with a voiceover at some point and put it out in its own separate video that's just clear and concise repotting a gardenia. It's just like repotting a house plant. Want to move it into a container that's the appropriate size, which would really normally be an inch or two inches larger on the outside diameter. Good drainage. Gardenias don't like to sit in water at all. They will rot out and die. I should mention I'm talking about in the house here, a uh, organically rich, well-drained potting mix that's airy and something that is potentially on the acidic side would be great for them. I actually really like the potting mix that this is in and I feel like it's going to mostly fill this container as it is. So I'm just going to use some of this palm and citrus mix that I have left over here from a different video that came out not too long ago to fill in the bottom of the container because I can tell it's not going to be quite high enough. Typically standard potting mix is fine just as long as it's draining well enough. You can always come in to these containers and add in some soil acidifier, something like a uh, holly tone would be great. Gardenias enjoy that. So it, as far as making sure that it's a peaty mix, I don't really know if you really need to do that. It being more of a peaty mix over a coconut mix might be a good idea, especially if you have water that's up there in your pH range. These aren't going to want a high pH. They want to be more on the neutral to acidic. Well, more on the acidic side. You go neutral, they'll probably be fine too. Neutral meaning a pH in your water and soil, either or, or both of seven. That's neutral. Below that is acidic. Above that, alkaline. If the pH is too high, then they're not going to be able to absorb nutrients in the appropriate manner. Let's see how well this rooted out. Over. That's pretty dang good, considering there was next to nothing going on in this container when I got the plant back in the springtime. I'm thinking, or I'm hoping, that this is going to be a very easy, yeah, okay, good. That's what I was hoping for. I didn't want to mess with those roots. Didn't want to have to mess with those very much at all because this plant does have some buds on it. And gardenias, sometimes they can throw a fit if you disturb their roots too much. They'll drop leaves and just overall be divas for a little bit after a repot sometimes. But the buds are usually the first thing to go. Glad I didn't have to do too much manipulation or messing around with things there. You may have noticed that the plant was not centered in its other container. I can try and adjust for that right here. I'm only going to be able to do so much without messing with that root mass. If it sticks up a little bit high, that's okay. Over time, the roots will start to develop down lower and it'll get a more pleasant overall straighter growth. This is, this is pretty good. Uh, this mix doesn't have much going on in it as far as organic materials concerned, which is something that gardenias really do enjoy. They like an organically rich soil. I know that's something that you hear whenever people are talking about house plants, plants in general, for most of them, it's a nice organically rich soil. But having some compost in their potty mix really does make a pretty big difference as far as just keeping their growth nice and green and steady. Having the extra organics in the mix seems to almost add a stability maybe is how I would describe it. And that's probably largely because it's going to help some with moisture retention and a more even breakdown of nutrients for the plant to take up over time. You have that nice slow release, a slow process for the roots to pull from as opposed to a very sterile mix like miracle Grow, where there's not much going on inside of this at all. There's some bark chips. I have noticed they do seem to have stepped up their game at least the last batch that I got from them. It does have a good amount of organic material in there. But if the plant is in a soilless mix, which is basically what this is, mix without any sort of compost or something of the sort, then all of its nutrient uptake is going to be completely, totally reliant on 
us, the growers, to make sure that we're getting in there with some sort of synthetic or liquid organic or adding compost in there for it to have something to pull off of to grow. And that's largely where the inconsistencies, the fluctuations start to happen. You're getting bursts of nitrogen and potassium, everything all at one time. Then it goes down for a while and then you do it again the next time you fertilize. Whereas with the compost, there's something in there to break down more evenly, more smoothly and slowly over time. A slow release would be a good idea. I don't have any and it's fine because I don't think I said it, but I alluded to it that I'm going to at some point take a handful of compost and work it into the top here. And I can throw some slow release in there as well. I was going to start to talk about like the care when it comes to fertilizing these, but I do have a separate video that's going to be coming out about growing gardenia indoors because they can be problematic sometimes for some people. Just wanted to get this repotted so it's nicer to look at. I was feeling that pot and it was feeling more firm, whereas a few months ago you could really push in on it. You could tell the roots weren't developed. Yeah, I just didn't want to mess with those roots if I didn't need to. I don't think I disturbed them too much. The downside to not disturbing the root mass is if there's too much inconsistency between the soil blood that's around those roots and the new mix, then the water disbursement when you water can be wacky and not ideal for the plant. It can flowing very heavily into the new mix and then not really being able to saturate the root ball like you would need to. But that's one of the reasons that I went with the cactus and palm mix and citrus mix is because it's one that already drains really well. And I know from having watered this plant for the last several months that that mix that it's in drains very quickly and sharply. So hopefully those will be a fine match together. And if not, lift it out and mess with it. It's gonna be watching out for droopiness, yellowing leaves, standard things. I will water it in when I'm done here. Not until then though, cause I'm surrounded by lights and can't really move around to get to the watering can. But I'll make sure that, that gets a nice even flush that it never sits in water. And uh, I'll talk about the care in the next video. I'm hopeful that I was able to repot this without messing with those buds. I would like for those flowers to open up. The Steady As She Goes has really sweet double flowers highly fragrant as you would expect on a gardenia and it has flowered sporadically since I got the plant really even uh, this winter I tend to talk about it a little bit now I tend to keep my gardenias in more of a dark dry area out here in the grow space was more the case back in the day when I didn't have things evenly heated out here and I had a cool place to store them and they would just kind of hang and chill out for the winter time Things are warmer now, so I didn't think that that would work out, but the two that I have have been hanging out way back, back there underneath the mule palms, and they're putting on buds. Their foliage is a nice deep green. They do look like they could use just a little bit of fertilizer. There's some yellowing starting to show up, just, just a little bit, but they've still been growing despite not having bright intense light. Normally inside, they need a good amount of light, so I'm happy to see that. I would like to move this over to the shelves over there where there's lights right above them because they'll flower much more profusely. And that would help even out the growth since that plant was off center in the old container. You need to get that moving out this way. A prune would be a good idea. I don't wanna do that though because I wanna get those flowers to open just so I can enjoy the fragrance out here during the winter time. Once those buds have opened up, assuming that they aren't gonna drop from being stressed out from being repotted, then I can come in and give that a cut back that'll encourage new branching. This will fill back out in that direction. It does feel good to at least just get a plant repotted. That was nice. I have some aeroids to be repotted. I ordered a bunch of stuff to make my aeroid mix like three weeks ago from Amazon. It was supposed to be next day delivery. It's still not here. That happening to anybody else. It's usually only when it's the next day or same day delivery. And I'm always like, whoa, it's gonna be here that fast. Then, no, it usually, it is not. <laughs> Oftentimes it does show up when they say it will, but every now and then if it says it's delayed, then it, normally that just means that I'm not getting it. Cancel that order a few days ago, put in a new one so I can get some of these aeroids repotted. I have the McDowell here who could use a larger container and a Gloriosum around the corner that needs to go into a larger container and a uh, Assuming by the time that gets done, if I'm still not seeing spider mites on them, maybe I'll move them over there onto the shelves. It's something I gotta think about. That was, I never made the point there. I wanna get more plants moved onto those shelves. I set up all those racks over there so I could arrange things nicely. And there are a lot of plants still waiting on this side of the grow space to go over there. But until I see a definite improvement with the spider mite situation, I'm not moving things around, which I don't think I ever made that point. That's why the gardenia has been hanging out over here because that's its section it's where it's been. So I'm not going to mess with it until I know that things are safe to put them under the more intense grow lights, which I'd like to do. So even after the growth gets those flowers going, we already talked about all that. Whew. 
it was a fun week. Let's say goodbye. And at the very end of the video, I'll put in a clip of the molding so you can see what's going on in that room. I hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on with your house plants? The cooler weather. It's like not cold, but nice, cool. 40 and 60 degree weather we've been having here has been so nice. Love not feeling trapped in the house because it's like 15 degrees outside. Hopefully y'all are enjoying that too. If you've been able to have that. I know some places it's kind of the opposite and there's an Arctic blast going on. I'm, I'm so sorry. If you're one of those people, that's gotta suck. I'm sorry. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye. Okay. Glad that I had said that in the vlog because by the time I was editing this, I had completely forgotten. Look at it. Look at, isn't it just beautiful? I know the room's still a mess. It's only been done for like an hour. I just got things kind of put back together in here. Look at the big, hi pumpkin. How you doing baby girl? The new big baseboards. Those look so good in the fresh white trim. It's so clean and so crisp. Now just imagine new carpet in here. Hopefully there will be some new carpet in here. Oh, carpet's getting changed out sometime in the next few months. Threw a new lampshade on that. That, that doesn't work, but I threw a new lampshade on there. And that's the update. So let me put the doorknobs back on. Probably gonna change out the hardware. Let me know what y'all think. All the original old brass stuff that just, I'm pretty sure is original to the house. With the grays and everything, I think that just a black or a, what's it called, rub bronze or what, whatever this is right here, I think would look better. But then does that mean I have to change the hinges? I don't want to do that. I don't want to change the hinges out. It's not the point. When I do the final office reveal, there will be a lot more to talk about because there will always be things to do in here and more projects going on for now it this is it looks so good you gonna go in your new pumpkin house pumpkin i've been getting real fidgety having somebody else doing all the work around the house so i got creative and cut a hole in the back of my desk for pumpkin now she has a little place to hang out while i work she doesn't seem to want to use it she's used it a couple of times but not as much as i had hoped it's only been a day i'm sure she'll start using it sometime soon this was supposed to be a quick update that's it see y'all next week